Aeneas Collins, the Royal Australian Navy's latest and most potent weapon, was launched on the 28th of August 1993 at the Australian Submarine Corporation's Osborne facility in South Australia. Well, today's launching ceremony of the submarine Collins represents the culmination of a commitment by this government in the mid-1980s, not only to Australia's defence, but also to Australia's defence industry. The submarine project went much further than a decision simply to replace the ageing Oberon-class submarines. It is indeed the first part of a determination to re-establish Australia's shipbuilding industry. I congratulate the Australian Submarine Corporation and the people who built HMAS Collins, the Swedish company Cockhams, Rockwell Systems Australia and all the other subcontractor suppliers and of course the Royal Australian Navy. You've all done a superb job and I know all Australians would want me to extend their warmest congratulations. Thank you. The first submarine and the class type are named after Sir John Collins, the first Australian-born Chief of Navy Staff. I name this submarine Collins. May God bless her and all who sail in her. HMAS Collins was launched by the widow of the distinguished sailor. Since 1987, Rockwell Australia and a team of four major contractors and at least 18 other subcontractors have worked together to build, deliver, set to work and integrate what is arguably the world's most advanced and capable combat system. Team members have included Laurel Libriscope in the USA, Thompson Sintra in France, Scientific Management Associates in Canberra, and Computer Sciences Corporation in Sydney. The final system will be at the cutting edge of technology while being user friendly. From the beginning, the Australian government chose to build in Australia, with both the Australian Submarine Corporation and Team Rockwell having to meet a high level of Australian industry involvement. This could be achieved by building components in Australia. Byron Stroud, the Scottish periscope builder, has contracted AWA Defence Industries to build periscopes in South Australia, with technology transfers or offsets on other programs. Early days saw activity worldwide, as the then Rockwell Ship Systems Australia visited and assessed contractors to get the best value products for the program. Seven manufacturers of pressure hull penetrators were assessed before DG O'Brien Incorporated of New Hampshire was chosen, and so on through the full combat system to achieve the optimum value for the Australian government dollar and the end user, the RAN submarine service. This program was not without risk, nor has it been without glitches. Horizontal stripes, are they the sonar glitches? Could well be. See how you're getting uh, the information's being transposed out to one side? In the early days, Rockwell realised that the power of the central processor was not going to be sufficient. They increased it without increasing cost to the customer. The Collins capacity has now been increased to greater than that of the USN's new Sea Wolf class SSN. As part of risk mitigation, Rockwell developed and used additional test sites, while the land-based test site and combat system simulator were assembled and set to work at HMS Watson in the Submarine Warfare System Centre. Sites were in A and MSD, Rockwell's parent at Anaheim, the Rockwell facility at North Ryde, CSC facility at St. Leonard, Sydney, and they all supported initial software development and integration. Today, the land-based test site is up and running, and the combat system simulator is available for testing and training. Collins is at sea, 
conducting sea trials using the first of a number of planned releases of combat system software. This allows for safe operations, surfaced and dived. After the launch in August 1993, Collins lay alongside, fitting out and setting to work the combat system and integrating new releases of the software until 31st of October 1994, when she finally sailed down the Port River under her own power to start sea trials. All the combat system gear was on board, together with Rockwell-supplied backup systems for radar, navigation and sonar to provide initial extra safety while the combat system itself was unproven. And of course, Rockwell personnel to support these systems. The heart and brains of the Rockwell Team CS is the System Supervisory Unit, or units. These provide the gateway to the fiber optic data bus for most of the sensors and navigation aids. The data bus uses a design pioneered by Rockwell USA, featuring high levels of redundancy and protection, even in catastrophic battle damage. There are, in fact, two data buses, each with six channels served by the SSUs. The large command plot and seven MFCCs were produced in Australia by British Aerospace under licence from Loral Libresco. Operators can sit at any MFCC control and operate any of the submarine sensors, sonars, periscopes, etc., and fire and control weapons and decoys. The system provides for automatic target motion analysis and ultimately computer-assisted target identification. As well as on the submarine, all this is duplicated in the Submarine Warfare Systems Centre at HMS Watson for operator training and tactical development. The test site requires extensive simulation and stimulation to realistically duplicate conditions, sounds and scenes met at sea and on patrol. Stand by to fire. Three, two, one, fire. Every test throws up problems. Masses in the beginning, but now decreasing as the software program demonstrates its increasing robustness. These problems, known as trouble reports, are analysed and corrected by Rockwell, CSC or Thompson as appropriate. Collins conducted its first dynamic dive in waters to the west of Kangaroo Island, South Australia, on the 9th of June, 1995. When the commanding officer took Collins quietly beneath the surface on that day, he and his crew were acutely aware that they could now wholly rely on the submarine's combat system to navigate the submarine and safely operate it down to the required depths for the conduct of trials. Shortly after the submarine is commissioned in mid-1996 and arrives at its home base of HMAS Stirling, Rockwell will deliver the next operational software release, which will allow the boat to progress towards acceptance into operational service. Rockwell and the Royal Australian Navy are committed to the continuous evaluation of the combat system design and performance to explore available technology and meet the changing operational needs of the end user. This approach is essential when considering the dramatic changes in the world order that have occurred since the early 1980s and the rapid rise of technological change. Rockwell and the RAN have commenced a review of the existing combat system requirements to ensure that the final system provides the capabilities, performance and flexibility needed by the RAN as it progresses towards and into the next century. Such an arrangement is precisely in keeping with Australia's 1994 Defence White Paper, which required an indigenous combat system capability to be developed and maintained in support of Australia's frontline warships. This upkeep capability, or partnership, created with the development of the combat system, will see a cradle-to-grave service provided for the Collins combat system throughout its lifetime and has to be in the very best interests of all Australians.
So what does the future hold for the Collins class combat system? Team Rockwell is investing valuable research and development dollars into submarine combat systems to not only support Collins, but also provide a competitive product for other emerging ocean-going submarine nations in our region. Rockwell is acutely aware that it must make such an investment in order that it may remain competitive in this niche submarine market and return valuable export dollars to Australia. As well as listening closely to the needs of its customers, Rockwell will be concentrating its efforts into reviewing the applicability of maximizing commercial off-the-shelf equipments in its systems. For Collins, the immediate future is to join the Royal Australian Navy. New ship Collins joined the Royal Australian Navy at a commissioning ceremony at Adelaide. This was a formal naval occasion and marked the acceptance into Navy service of the RAN's newest major warship and the first submarine ever to be built in Australia. It was also a memorable occasion for the builder of the submarine, the Australian Submarine Corporation, and for the combat system team headed by Rockwell Australia, with a handover to the RAN of the first submarine and the culmination of over nine years of design and build set to work and trials. The weekend of commissioning started with His Excellency the Governor-General joining distinguished guests arriving from all over the world and from around Australia. They assembled in Adelaide on Saturday the 27th of July. On Saturday afternoon, guests were invited to the commissioning service at the ASC facility submarine berth at Osborne, South Australia. It was a lovely day for this auspicious occasion. Ship's company, New Ship Collins, paraded before their guests and in front of the submarine for the service of commissioning conducted by service chaplains. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit depend upon HMAS Collins and all who sail in her and remain with them always. Oh, The blessing of the ship. The commands of duty lay upon us all. The captain, Commander Peter Sinclair, read the commissioning warrant. The Australian national flag was hoisted on the jack star forehead and the white ensign aft, with the commissioning pennant being flown from the whip aerial. HMAS Collins had joined the fleet. The ship's company marched aboard and the submarine was theirs. On completion, HE, the Governor General, was shown over HMAS Collins. For Rockwell, a major successful milestone was the acceptance into service. Three, two. 